call this video, Was Yasser Arafat Even Palestinian? Yasser Arafat was born in 1929. Where? Does anybody know? Not, not in Palestine. No, no. Not in British Palestine, no. He was born in Cairo. His father, Abdel Rauf al Qudwa al Husani, was born in. 1864 in Gaza. He was born there. Also, let's just put a star because Gaza in 1864 belonged to the Ottoman Empire. There was no country called Palestine. He was born there, but he actually moved to Cairo where he worked as a textile merchant. You guys want to know why he went to back to Egypt, to Cairo? Because Arafat's grandmother was born there. And everything we know from that side of his family tree actually goes back to Egypt and Egypt and Egypt. So from his father's side, Arafat is actually completely Egyptian. From his mother's side, things are a little bit more confusing because his mother did live and her family was from Jerusalem. But if we go back, family tree, you know where they came from? They weren't indigenous to that area. They were actually Syrian. They came to Jerusalem because they were family with the Mufti. That's how they got to Jerusalem. But from his mother's side of the family, going back generations, yeah, actually from Syria. Arafat's mother died when he was really, really young and his father couldn't deal with seven kids on his own. So he actually sent Arafat to his mother's side of the family in Jerusalem and that's where he grew up most of his childhood. Does that make him indigenous to Palestine? I don't know. I'm gonna leave that to you to answer. What I do think is important about this time is that his father used to beat him when he found out that Arafat used to go to Jewish synagogues and make friends with Jewish people. And he used to beat him for that. And the excuse Arafat gave was because he wanted to learn about the way Jewish people think. I think this just proves that there was already clear anti-Semitism and hatred towards the Jews who were indigenous and who were living in the British Mandate for Palestine. When Arafat grew up, he went back to Cairo and that's where he went to university. By the way, that's where he met two of his really good friends, Abu Jihad and Abu Iyad. And these are the two guys that kind of helped him make the PLO after, but we'll get to that in the future. In 1946, he already called himself an Arab nationalist, not a Palestinian nationalist, an Arab nationalist. And what he did was help smuggle in weapons into the British mandate for Palestine. Those weapons went to, this is actually their name, the Army of the Holy War Militants. Not the Army for the Palestinian Liberation Organization. The Army of the Holy War Militants. <sighs> Can we just take a second to, to, to let that soak in? In 1946, there was already talk about holy war. I love how they say anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism. <laughs> Some additional facts about Arafat that maybe you don't know is he actually served in the Egyptian army. Yeah, fought for Egypt. Him and his pals actually left for Kuwait and in the 1960s, they started the Fatah or the Palestinian Liberation Organization movement. And that's basically where they started to coin the term Palestinian. Up until then, really, he was an Arab nationalist. He was a Jew-hating Arab nationalist. Up until the 1960s, nobody called themselves Palestinian because the term Palestinian was actually a slur against the indigenous Jewish population that lived in the British Mandate of Palestine at the time. So Arabs called themselves Arabs. They only started to call themselves Palestinians when Arafat coined the term and started pushing the idea for the Palestinian Liberation Organization. Also in 1964 is when he adopted the flag. Up until then, there was no flag. There was no country called Palestine ever with a flag. Yasser Arafat was the one to get this flag, choose this flag, which by the way is super similar, right, to the Hashemite flag in Jordan. And you know, it goes with the vibe of like a lot of other Arab countries in the, in the region. But he was the first one to actually be like, we have a flag even though you never had a flag. So in the 60s and 70s and 80s, the whole time of the PLO and resistance and, you know, terrorism, let's just call it the way it is, this was actually all organized outside of Israel. In Kuwait, you know, there's lots of money there, that helps. Infiltration from Lebanon. There were periods where he was actually um, detained in Syria. He was in Jordan for some time. And then you guys probably know he, he lived in Tunisia for many, many years. That's where a lot of terrorist organizations were operated from. And you know, that's where his like headquarters were for many years. Just a little side note, and I know this has nothing to do with the question of was he Palestinian or was he not Palestinian, but I just have to let you know. So he married a lady named Suha who he met in France 
France, and Suha tried to leave the marriage several times, but he never allowed it. Suha has stated on several accounts that she regrets her marriage to Arafat. Um, <sighs> A man who forbids his wife who is unhappy in a marriage to leave the marriage? Wow, that says so much about a person. That also says so much about what he thinks about women's rights and human rights in general. Was he Palestinian or not? Okay, so I think he was not even Palestinian because first of all, there was no group of people who called themselves Palestinian prior to the 1960s. Was he an Arab? Definitely. Definitely. Did he speak Arabic? Yes. Was he born in an Arab country? Yes. Egypt. Was his mother of Arab descent? Yes, definitely. She came from Syria. That's where her descent was. Arafat was Egyptian and Syrian, period. And I love the fact that, no, I don't love it. I don't love it. I just find it so ironic that like the father of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, the man who made the flag the flag, the man who carried out so many terrorist attacks against Jews all over the world, and I say Jews, not only Israelis, because again, don't call it anti-Zionism, it's anti-Semitism because lots of terrorist attacks went on in Argentina and in, 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 in and around the world, in France and wherever, what, what not, airplanes that were flying from here to there that got hijacked. Jews were targeted all over the world and still are in the name of anti-Zionism. When are you going to get this straight? Anti-Zionism means you are anti-Semitic. There is no differentiation between the two. For 2,000 years, we dreamt of coming back to our home while Palestinians were roaming around the Middle East and North Africa. I was born in Canada, but before then, my parents lived here in Israel. My parents were born in Europe, survived the Holocaust. But before then, my parents came to Ottoman Empire, Palestine, and purchased land legally. And before then, my great, great, great grandparents were rabbis in Jerusalem. And before then, and before then, and before then, and if we go generations back, there has always been a part of my family that has been here in what is modern day Israel. And we can go back 2,000, 3,000 years, all the way back to the days of the temple and King David. I'm gonna say something that's gonna be super unpopular, but I'm gonna say it anyways, because somebody needs to say it. Do you know that for thousands of years, this area was pretty much deserted? And you know when lots of Arabs from surrounding Arab countries started arriving in what is today known as Israel? It's when the Zionists came with money from around the world, they came with money, purchased land legally, started building the land, building infrastructure, created kibbutzes, created cities, started investing in agriculture, and that's when the economy boomed. So Arabs from all the surrounding Arab countries around, because you know, borders weren't like they are today, they came here, they moved across the region, and they came here looking for work, looking to live their life peacefully, just just to work, to provide for their families. But does that make them indigenous to the land? I think you guys understand where I'm going with this, and I think you guys now understand why I think it's important to say Yasser Arafat was not even Palestinian. The Kingdom of Israel was always and will always be the indigenous homeland to the Jewish people.